Good morning, YouTubians. It's Kim, it's Ghost. It's Monday. It's a Blu-ray release day. It's Halloween tomorrow. Hope everybody has a great time. I'm not going to be here. I'm flying out to Gran Canaria tomorrow. It's very windy on the seafront, but bright as well. So hopefully you can pick up this audio. Yeah, I'm going to go and see my brother, his wife and two children. And I'm going to be away from my channel for three weeks. Well, Blu-ray hunting for three weeks. There will be a collection video going up and that will be the seas. So look out for that. Gonna go and grab a coffee in a minute. I popped into HMV on Saturday and they hadn't received one of the big titles that are coming out today. So whether or not that's gonna be pushed back, I don't know. That one is a haunted mansion. So, and that's what I'm planning to pick up. So hopefully it will be in. What else to show you? I've got some subscriber mail as well. And I picked up my car last Monday and I did a little bit of videoing around that. So I'll pop that in and you'll see that probably just after this clip. We're gonna go and grab a coffee now, so let's head up to the city and get a nice hot beverage. I'll see you up in HMV in just a bit. Almost forgot to mention, I won't be taking my tablet with me while I'm away in Grand Canary, so I won't be able to comment on anybody's video. I will be watching on my wife's phone. Plus, I'm not taking my camera, so there won't be any footage either. Okay, so I thought I'd show you around the new car. This is the Ford Cougar Titanium Edition. Obviously, I've blurred out the number plate. Unfortunately, my allotted parking space is under a tree, so you can imagine by now, a few days later, it is covered in bird excrement. Inside is nothing really new. I, it was raining before I filmed this. There's a picture that pops up on the display when you enter the car, and it serves absolutely no purpose whatsoever. Here it is again. You'll see just down there on the left, it's only done 10.3 miles and it was a six mile journey back from the showroom. So it was only four on the clock when I picked it up. So waiting for the information tablet to start. These tablets are pretty standard now. They have been included in the last three cars I've owned and each time they seem to be a little bit more advanced than the last one. Here's the dashboard now kicking in. On the driver's display, there's what's called the calm screen. That's just the color choice. On the right's a fuel gauge. Next to that's a rev counter. Top middle's a radio station currently tuned in. Left's the speedometer indicating top speed, which is 160 which is great in a mostly 20 mile an hour zone. What I will say about this car is the Bang & Olufsen sound system is very crisp, very good sound on this. Here's a tablet display, pretty much straightforward stuff. I won't put the sat nav on because I'm home and it will reveal exactly where I live. We've got some stations here, we've got heart there, radio one, two, three, and four. I've not pre-programmed any of these yet, so they will be a little bit different within the next couple of weeks. Obviously, everybody at home is now synced their phones to the car. I still don't own a mobile phone, so it doesn't apply to me. Also on the screen is a dual temperature control, so the driver and passenger can have different options. On the steering wheel are various controls, cruise control, volume for radio and phone. On the right are the hands-free buttons. You can also bring up phone books and menus. And behind that are the windscreen wipers. And below the tablet, you can find manual controls for the temperature and radio. And below are some of the many USB ports in the car too. There's also a button on the key fob for closing the boot automatically. That's a feature that's new to me. Never had that before on any of the previous cars I've owned. And finally, here is a look at the engine. Now, this is not a hybrid, it's just unleaded. I did overhear at the Ford dealership that they were in a state of a panic since the government's U-turn on the electric car only manifesto. But I know very little on engines now. The cars I started out were very different by design. I passed my test back in the 1980s. They look very complicated by comparison. I wouldn't even know where to start. Hey everybody, sorry to interject, but I've just received a parcel. This is Wednesday morning and I've removed the name and address both sides. I've not opened it yet. I'm gonna assume this is from a subscriber because I've got nothing on order in the post at the moment. And I'm gonna assume, because it's quite light, it could be some slip covers. I could be wrong, but I'm gonna open it in just a second, find out. I did put a call out a couple of weeks ago if anybody had any spare slip covers because I'm now collecting them and I need as many as I can get my hands on. So let's open this up now and see if I'm right. Well, that was really difficult to get into and there is a note. So I'm gonna put it up in the corner, read long. It says, hi mate, just a few more slip covers for you. All the best, Alan Jones. Awesome, let's hope the ones I don't have. I'm gonna get them out and I'll put them on the covers so you can see them in all their glory. Okay, first one is Point Break. I do already have a version, but not this version. So I'm gonna keep this one anyway, because it's nice to swap them over now and again. I'll take you over to Point Break and show you the alternate one that I have. So there's the one I have on the left-hand side already. The right one is one of the Warner Brothers Iconic Moments slipcovers, which are nice. I do have a few of those in my collection, but I will keep both of them because, 
Well, I like them both. So the next one Alan sent me is Weird Science. This is the Arrow release. I did have this slipcover originally, but I gave it away a long time ago. So it's nice to have this one back. Let's go and put it on the film. So here it is, slipless at the moment. Let's put that slip on there and make it a whole lot better. Now that makes all the difference. That's lovely. And there it is on the shelf. Awesome. Next one is for office Christmas party. I don't know if I've got this one or not. Let's go and take a look. So no, that's another one that was missing from my collection. So brilliant. Let's pop that on that one. Look at that. That is lovely. Nice clear spine. Beautiful. As you can see, I need a whole lot more. Okay, on to the next slip. And the next one is a slip for my favourite film, which I do already have the slip for, but I'm going to have a look, see if this one's in better condition. So there's mine on the left. There's one I was sent on the right. The one on the right does have a little bit of paintwork chipped out of there, but mine one does have some residue left over from a sticker. I could probably get rid of that. I'm going to, I'm, I'll keep this one, have that one as a spare. Okay, next one is for Love Actually. I don't think I have this one already, so let's go and check. I do like that design. If you've seen the film, you'll know it's from the Christmas concert. One of the children's dressed up as an octopus, Christmas octopus, obviously. And the quote underneath, you'll find that Love Actually is all around. This is from the Universal Iconic Moments slips. So let's have a look. There we go, Love Actually. No slip on that, so let's put it on there. So there it is, that looks lovely, nice clear spine, makes all the difference, alternate artwork. Let's pop it on the shelf. Okay, next one is for Megan. I do already own this one and it is in pristine condition. I'll keep this one as a spare if you don't mind. Next one is for It Follows. I don't think I have this slip cover either, so let's go and take a look. Happens to be down a lower corner and no, don't have the slip cover for it. So awesome, let's put it on. So that is lovely. That makes all the difference. That feels almost like velvet. Nice clear spine. Stands out. Wonderful. And there it is down in the corner. Absolutely fantastic. And the last one in the pack is for Anchorman 2, which is right next to me. Let's put it on. So that really is nice. Nice and reflective. Got some raised letter in there. Again, nice clear spine. Let's put it next to Anchorman 1. And right there, you can see the difference. It just pops on the shelf. That's lovely. So you have Anna and the Apocalypse. So thank you, Alan James. You have made my day. Thank you so much for sending them my way. You, mate, are a star. So there's Blink182 in the window. And to coin a phrase, into HMV we go. Now, which T-shirt is on display? Well, it's Cynthia again. But I can see they have re-angled it at a more appropriate an angle. First title to show you is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation, or The Return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This stars Renny Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey. How has that passed me by? So 1994, rated an 18 certificate, and it's 15.99. It's 12.99 on Amazon. Door one and door two next. This is a limited edition, just 2,000 copies available. Two films are from 1988 and 1991, and they have an overall runtime of 176 minutes. This is priced at 19.99. Next is The Horseman. This 1971 drama stars Omar Sharif and Jack Palance and it's directed by John Frankenheimer. He's the man behind Birdman of Alcatraz, The Mancurian Candidate and French Connection 2. This is priced at $17.99. Spoiler alert next is a biographical romantic drama starring Jim Parsons and Ben Aldrich. This has been pushed back a few times before but it gets its release today. This will set you back $14.99 which is actually cheaper than Amazon at the moment. Next is The Admirable Crichton, an action-adventure romantic comedy from 1957, written and directed by Lewis Gilbert. $17.99 for this one today. It is £3 cheaper if you order it from Amazon. Comes with a U certificate. Here is Wandering Earth 2. The first part came out in 2019, but yet to get a Blu-ray release, so I'm not sure how well this will sell. Believe it or not, this film grossed $604 million. I personally have never heard of it. It is the eighth highest grossing film this year. It's got a runtime of 172 minutes. And it's priced at just $12.99. Next is Food of the Gods, a sci-fi thriller and to some extent a creature feature as nourishment exudes on the ground, making anything that eats it massive in size, giving residents giant wasps, rats and eventually cows to contend with. This is priced at $14.99. 
So next is the 4K standard release of Megan. There is a still book available, but it wasn't in store today. This is priced at $19.99, doesn't come with a slip cover. If you'd like out of control Androids, then this film is for you. Batman, the long Halloween 4K deluxe edition. This is a combo release, so the Blu-ray is included. Let's just combine both feature length parts into one epic saga, and it's priced at $19.99, comes with a lovely glossy slip cover. Next is an exclusive to HMV, it's Strange Way of Life, a Spanish Western drama short film coming in just 31 minutes and costing just $5.99, which is very cheap indeed. It stars Ethan Hawke and Pedro Pascal. Next is a Dazzler media release of Right Here, Right Now, documenting a free concert that was held here in Brighton Beach in 2002. They expected 40,000 people, but a quarter of a million showed up. I remember the chaos very well. This is priced at $19.99. Next is the medium rare entertainment release of Our Man in Havana. This is a comedy drama from 1959. It's about the British Secret Service agents in Cuba. It stars Alec Guinness, Beryl Ives, Maureen O'Hara and Noel Coward. $17.99 for this one. Next is Justice League Times Ruby Superheroes and Huntsman Part 2. That's quite a title. It's from Warner Brothers and is priced at $11.99. Comes with a slipcover and a 12 certificate. Next is Cobweb, a horror thriller from this year about an eight-year-old boy who hears tapping inside his bedroom wall, which leads to a voice. And let's just say his parents are hiding a secret. This one is priced at $14.99. Next is the 4K limited edition release of Fascination from Indicator, limited to 6,000 copies as well as 4,000 Blu-rays. Comes with an 80-page book, an alternate extended sex scene, and it appears to be presented in a digibook type edition. I could be wrong. This is priced at $24.99. Again from Indicator, another limited edition 4K release, this time Lips of Blood. There are 6,000 4Ks, 4,000 Blu-rays, but that's spread over the UK and America. Also comes with an 80-page booklet as well as many extra features and is also priced at £24.99. There are two different releases of Chopper today from Second Sight. Here is a standard release, a dark-humoured biographical crime drama starring Eric Banner as Chopper, a.k.a. Mark Reed, who is a prisoner telling his story from the inside. $17.99 for the standard release and the limited edition almost doubled that price, £30.99, but it does include a 70-page booklet and art cards and it comes in a rigid case and an 18 certificate. Next is the Ginger Snaps Trilogy. Very good films, but I won't be getting it because I already have the imprint films release. This is on Second Sight, and it tells of two sisters whose doll's lives are changed by a werewolf. Third film sees their ancestors and how they were all linked. £40 for this set. Hey everybody, welcome back. So there's just two titles to show you today because there was a, a delivery issue with Disney, so let's crank on with it. Okay, first one to show you is Spoiler Alert. This is a biopic told as a romantic drama. It's based on the memoirs of Michael Ocelio, who has been portrayed here by Jim Parsons, who you will know as Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang Theory. Great show. Now, Michael works for a TV magazine company obsessed with collecting Smurf memorabilia, and it tells of his relationship with a photographer called Kit Cowan, who's being played by Ben Aldrich. So their relationship's just like anybody else's. It has its ups and its downs. I will point out, actually, that Michael suffers a lot with his insecurities. Well, a year into their relationship and Kit's parents are still in the dark about their son's sexuality, which is actually revealed abruptly, which hurts his mother because of his son feeling uncomfortable telling her. Now, Kit's mother's Marilyn being played by Sally Fields. We then skip 13 years ahead after a brief separation. Kit tells Michael he has a rare and untreatable form of cancer, which isn't really a spoiler because the movie opens on that reveal. I'm not actually going to say any more about the plot, but don't worry, there's a lot more to it. Christmas features quite heavily in this movie, which is nice, my favourite time of the year. This is directed by Michael Showalter, whose previous films include The Big Sick and Lovebirds. This has got a runtime 1 hour 52 minutes. Let's take a look inside. So on the disc, there is an image of Jim Parsons and Ben Aldrich. So that was spoiler alert. Okay, next and last is The Admirable Crichton. This is a comedy adventure romance movie from 1957, based on a play written in 1902 by J.M. Berry, the man behind the Peter Pan stories. This is also known as Paradise Lagoon in the United States of America. And the film stars Kenneth Moore as a butler named William Crichton. He's also referred to as Gov, but that's a little bit later on in the film. The film itself is set 1905 in London. Crichton works for Henry, who is an Earl. Henry, who is played by Cecil Parker, is a good man. He believes every man is equal and often proves his point by example, much to his spoilt grown-up daughter's dismay. And to avoid a scandal, not of Henry's making, he takes his family along with his staff on a trip to the South Seas via his yacht. And during a storm, his engines blow up and the family are shipwrecked. And this is when the proverbial apple cart gets upset. 
The Earls family are less than useless for providing for themselves, whereas Crichton is a dab hand at survival techniques. And it's not long before they're all dancing to his tune. Mary the Earl's daughter, played by Sally Ann Howes, who played truly scrumptious in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, is reluctant at first, to say the least, but eventually she does fall in line and in love with the new leader. She does, however, have some competition in the form of Tweeny, who's being played by Diane Cliento, who happened to be the kitchen maid before the shipwreck. Now, I'm not going to say any more on that or how it turns out, but it does have a really nice conclusion. Kenneth Moore is always a standout character, and in this, he shines. This is directed by Lewis Gilbert, whose films include Educating Rita, Carve a Name with Pride, and the James Bond films The Spy Who Loved Me and Moonraker. It's got a run time of just 89 minutes, quite a short one. Let's take a look inside. So the colourful front cover image has been put onto the disc. So that was the admirable Crichton. So that was it. Have you seen any of those? Plan to pick them up or just want to leave a comment and do so down below. I will read every one. It might take me a while to reply because I'm off to Gran Canaria tomorrow. Give the video a thumbs up. It really does help the channel. Subscribe if you haven't. It's all free. Why wouldn't you? And on that note, all I have to say is thank you so much for choosing my channel today and watching my video. Take care. I'll see you all in a couple of weeks. Bye.